Welcome back to another straightforward and no hype weather forecast from me right here at One Nation Weather. You can see hurricane barrels going to hit Texas. You can see that at the bottom of your screen. We've seen showers and thunderstorms crossing the screen as well over the mainland United States. I've got an update on all of that here. And in fact, let's take a look at those headlines for our July 5th, 2024 weather update as Hurricane Barrel is indeed targeting Texas into Monday. There will also be inland effects a little bit further north than initially expected just from landfall onward there from enhanced rainfall and storminess out of this storm. I've got an update on the general U.S. weather pattern, including the heat as well in this video. So stick around for all of that. Also, make sure that if you enjoy this kind of content that you're hitting that subscribe button down below to help not only support me, but get you that consistent, accurate, and easy to understand weather content. You can always check out weather bell for model maps like the ones I'm using on screen right now also. What we're talking about here as we head into the weekend is this cold front over the East Coast and the Gulf Coast. This is going to be bringing showers and thunderstorms from Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, those states all the way on down there through the Carolinas and then back westbound towards Louisiana and Texas where we're probably not going to need the rain, although we need it before this front's going to move through. We're definitely not going to need it after with barrel on the way. You can already see barrel entering at the bottom of the screen. I'll break that down in more detail using the timestamps in the description you can navigate to around the five minute mark of the video where I'll start talking about that. But what you also noticed this weekend around the Saturday, July 6th, late day time frame, while we've got that front on the East Coast, we've also got a new low bringing showers and storms towards parts of Nebraska and Kansas on the southern end of this low pressure system. That's where we'll have the potential for some isolated, even scattered severe storms capable of especially damaging winds and hail. As we go towards our Sunday, things are really going to begin to get affected in the weather pattern by barrel here. I want to circle it down there. Notice it is near the Corpus Christi area, coming in as if it's going to be on that trajectory where it's going to go between Corpus and Houston in there in Texas. And again, we've been continually seeing a northward shift on models like the Euro, like the GFS. A couple days ago, they were showing a trek right there along the Texas-Mexico border. Now we're seeing this thing over the water longer. That could mean we get a stronger hurricane one, as you see by the dropping pressure on screen, but two, a lot more rainfall skimming all the way along that coastline Definitely something to track there, and again, I'll break that down in more detail here in a second. Also notice from the southern plains where some severe weather will be possible, as well as the central plains, all the way in over there to the southeastern United States, we'll be watching some, some storm coverage there on our Sunday. And then going into Monday, here's when we're likely going to see barrel late Sunday night into our Monday morning. That's the most likely landfall time frame for this storm. Could be a Cat 1 or Cat 2, maybe even a Cat 3. Those are the most likely scenarios out of the storm notice very heavy rain for parts of east central and the southern coast there of texas as well as on over there towards louisiana out of the storm monday and then as well as over a lot of the southeastern quadrant of the u.s we're also just going to be watching some generalized showers and thunderstorms out ahead of this some moisture influence from this definitely is kind of moving around on the eastern side of the storm as you're going to continue to notice here with increased shower and thunderstorm chances from arkansas over to parts of the ohio valley back down towards mississippi alabama georgia the carolinas and florida as i'm circling here coming out of monday into our tuesday and wednesday so july 8th going into july 9th and 10th notice increased storm chances over a lot of this region the models are in disagreement on really coming out of tuesday into wednesday exactly where this is going to be the gfs model shows more precipitation extending back towards the west of where I'm circling here. The European model indicating that whatever's left of barrel will continue bringing heavy precipitation while combining with a front out of the Ohio Valley and over towards New England. That's something we'll have to track with time. What we'll also be tracking with time is this new entity bringing showers and storms from parts of Wisconsin and Minnesota all the way back down there towards Colorado and New Mexico begins to emerge. That'll be something we'll be watching for some plain severe weather, which is not abnormal for this time of the year, heading towards the back half of next week. Now let's track precipitation with that same model. I just used the European model. Starting just with the next couple of days, notice already before barrel even brings an influence to the pattern, you see the heavy rain over the Gulf here, south of where I'm circling. That's barrel, but up here north of it, we're going to get some one-inch totals out of some of the heavier thunderstorms, and particularly eastern Texas, parts to Louisiana, Mississippi, as well as Southern Alabama, heading out of Friday into Saturday as well with some of that heavy rain there. Now, what you notice is we start to add on to that, and really a lot of this rain is going to end up being from barrel when you see the final totals through the end of the week here. Just through around the Monday 6 p.m. time frame, I really think that there could be a lot more heavy rain south of where this is being circled, because keep in mind this European model is a more northern track on this storm. Nonetheless, 
it, from really the Brownsville area, especially to Corpus Christi and to Houston, as well as western Louisiana, be prepared. Some totals could really instigate flooding with two to four inches plus of rainfall in a day or two's time. Maybe even more than that, especially if this thing moves slowly up the coastline. Notice from there how this really influences is the pattern, especially if you go with the European model, really from eastern Texas all the way on up there to the New York City and Boston region. Lots of totals there in the yellows and oranges, at least one to two inches of rain. If widespread spots get one to three inches of rain, that would be beneficial heading eastward, though, because that won't be enough to cause major flooding, and it will really relieve drought in areas that need that. So let's go ahead and break down what is currently Tropical Storm Barrel. I should have called it that a little bit earlier in the video, but it's been a hurricane all along. It has weakened just because it's sitting over the northern part of the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. It's actually in more favorable conditions now, and it's still maintaining that shrimp-like look. The only thing that's not favorable is that land interaction that it has been having it is expected to continue making its way towards the west northwest before taking more of that northerly curve here in the coming days so here's the latest advisory as of 5 p.m eastern time on our july 5th notice this thing still a potent tropical storm bringing 65 mile per hour winds 75 mile per hour gusts two parts of the northwestern yucatan things are going to really start to go uphill from here though for the yucatan peninsula of mexico so if you live in cancun any of those areas there on the northern tip make sure uh, that you're riding the rest of this out but it should be winding down from there while the storm continues to wind down in intensity according to the hurricane center to around a 60 mile per hour storm overnight tonight heading into july 6th tracking the cone out from there notice it's widening out because the cone is really where this thing could go it could go as far as the northern tip of that cone or on the far southern tip anywhere i just circled there fair game for this as it could be continuing to trek more to the north or it could continue to trek a little bit more towards the west it's been wobbling northward with time wouldn't be surprised if it continues to stay on the northern edge of the cone like it has been for a while what happens here could be pivotal because if it takes that northern track goes a little bit more towards the rest of the gulf of mexico that could be where houston gets more of a hit with time and we see a stronger hurricane that southern track though would definitely be a little weaker in most model scenarios nonetheless the hurricane center by the end of our saturday heading into our sunday here thinking that this is going to be a strengthening tropical storm going into that cat one strength that is as it approaches the corpus christi area there of texas in fact look at that as I zoom in on this, this is as we go into our July 8th end of the afternoon. So this is by the time we go towards out of Sunday and into our Monday. Now looking at a 90 mile per hour Cat 1 hurricane with wind gusts up to 115 miles per hour. That is Cat, Cat 3 strength there. You definitely need to be prepared if you're anywhere in this red cone particularly because no one is out of the woods if you're in this cone. Even areas outside of these National Hurricane Center cones can see impacts, so make sure you're staying up to date on weather.gov and nhc.noaa.gov. Those are your official sources for information even when I'm not posting videos like this. I really think this could be a Cat 2 or 3, especially if it stays on that eastern side of this cone and tries to edge towards Houston or you know parts of the western shores of Louisiana. That's still not out of the full woods yet. It could go as far inland though as central texas but the more likely scenario is where i just drew those arrows as you can see there which is right in the middle of that cone weakening down to a depression after making again that most direct hit with hurricane impacts down there towards the corpus christi area there of texas from Brownsville up to Houston, that's where I think you really need to be on highest alert for this storm. Brownsville's actually decreasing some of the chances for the worst hit, though, at this time. Okay, this is a collection of European, Canadian, American ensembles. All of this guidance blended into one here, a great map from the website you see right there on the bottom right of your screen. Those black lines on the edge of the green, thats I just drew those there to really show you the contour and the edges of where these ensembles really think this storm is going to go. Notice the key at the bottom, the most moderate to high chance for this storm to make landfall and for its location to be right now, once it gets to Texas late Sunday heading into Monday, is right down there from around Brownsville to Corpus Christi. That remains the highest probability. However, things are continuing to shift to the north and east. So as you notice there, Houston's right on the edge of that green and the black line that I added there. This thing could continue to make that eastward progression with some of these models as it not wobbles northward with every run. We definitely need to track that. I really think East Central Texas is going to be hit the hardest by some of these impacts. Here's the National Hurricane Center's graphic for the earliest reasonable arrival time of tropical storm force winds using the current cone. This is assuming winds do make it on up there and there's higher chances in those deeper colors. Notice it's around Sunday in the morning when some of those outer bands and some of those gusty winds could be approaching northern Mexico, southern Texas, maybe even on up there towards southern Louisiana if we see some of those lash out that direction and this thing continues to make its way a little bit further north and northeast rather than towards the northwestern side of this. 
it looks like late Sunday around 8 p.m. is going to be that real time when a lot of central and southern coastlines there of Texas are going to start to feel the effects of this. And this could include Houston late Sunday heading into early Monday, assuming this thing takes that eastern side of this track. Notice there is still a lot of uncertainty with this, but again, it looks like that highest chance for a landfall of those strongest tropical storm to even hurricane force winds is going to be right there around Corpus Christi, where chances are already upwards of 60 to 70 percent that at least some 50 plus mile per hour winds probably make their way on through at least 40 plus for sure. These are the hurricane watches that have been put up by the Hurricane Center. Down here in Port Isabel that I'm circling right now, you are under a hurricane watch. So from the Mexico border down there of beaches, in fact, far northern Mexico is also under a hurricane watch. All the way in up here to Corpus Christi, we've got Port Aransas, uh, Portland, Rockport, these locations. You are under a hurricane watch, meaning that we could see hurricane conditions set in a couple days out from now. Time is running out. Make sure you're making those last minute preparations and listening to local officials. It's not time to panic in any of these areas I'm underlining, but it's definitely time to be prepared and ready to listen here in these locations. So Sea Drift, Port Lavaca, up to Point Comfort, uh, as well as Palacios there in Texas. Uh, I apologize if, if I said that wrong. Be ready here. And even on up here where I just drew access, Freeport, Texas, on up there to Galveston, even the Houston area, we could certainly see watches and warnings extended there with time. Things are definitely going to be shifting northward, I continue to think here, as we've been seeing that wobble with the storm just persist. We're looking at all those storm surge conditions here and where they could be possible with storm surge upwards of three to five feet here possible from Sargent, Texas, all the way down there through Matagorda Bay, Corpus Christi Bay, Baffin Bay, down to the mouth of the Rio Grande. If you're in or between any of those locations, that is where storm surge is already looking likely at this time. Other areas will, I'm sure, see it as well. Now let's take a look at some of the rainfall here. And I just want to point out that just through you know, the Wednesday early time frame here. So this is just from late Monday heading through early Wednesday, a lot of these totals. Look at how heavy this rain is from south central Texas all the way in up here to the east central areas. Especially if this thing skirts along that coastline, we could see widespread three to six inch totals from Brownsville and especially Corpus Christi all the way on up there to the southeastern suburbs of Dallas and down there towards College Station, Houston. All of these locations, very heavy rainfall. And it is looking like with time as we head through the very back half of the week, that interacting with some fronts, we could still see some lingering rainfall. Wouldn't be surprised if we ended up with six to eight inches plus of rain, especially isolated locations. Again, mainly from Corpus Christi to Houston and to some inland areas just north of that as this thing slows down. Definitely watching those heavy rainfall totals. Flooding is a big concern and probably one of the biggest out of this storm. All right, let's shift over to the high temperatures because it is very hot over a lot of the United States. Again, subscribe if you want more updates on that hurricane, though. Here we go. Saturday, July 6th of 2024. Heading into that time frame, very hot here towards California, Nevada, as well as southwestern Arizona. Some temperatures there in Death Valley in the coming days, we could get near 120 to 130. These valley locations getting 110 plus. This is record-breaking heat in any of those boxed areas. Definitely take that heat seriously there. Also looking at 80s and 90s over a lot of the southeastern U.S., especially ahead of a front that I was just talking about earlier in the video. Still got some 80s and 90s there in parts of the South Central Plains, more like upper 70s for the Northern Plains, the Midwest, and parts of the Great Lakes. A lot of 77 to 79 ratings then, and then even into Sunday over those locations there. Here we go towards our July 7th. This is our Sunday. Illinois, Missouri, all the way down to the Carolinas and Georgia, lots of 90s there, but nothing too unseasonable. It's going to be a little warmer than average in isolated spots, though. The big story is this ridging in the west. This is where it's going to be well above average in the coming days and continuing through the midweek time frame of next week. Please, you know, avoid any of those hikes out there if you can. And if you can't, you know, and you, you, you feel like you got to do it or you are just doing it, you know, listen to local officials. If they're advising not to, please don't. Especially, again, if you're to the west of this line here, that's where a lot of this ridging is going to be ongoing Monday. In any of these locations there towards the west coast, as well as on over here, even in the southeastern quadrant of the United States, where it'll be very hot with time. Just make sure to drink plenty of water if you have to be outside. Listen to officials. If there's a heat advisor, excessive heat warning in place, you need to listen to that because this is a concerning situation there. Here we go towards Tuesday, July 9th of 2024, upper 70s and low 80s over the upper Midwest and Great Lakes. We've got 80s over a lot of the rest of the country here in these areas I just circled. And we're also going to continue to see that blasting heat, even surging further north with some of those triple digits well into eastern Washington, Oregon, Idaho. The heat is going to be bad there. We're still going to be looking at plenty of 80s here, but they'll be tame, especially in the uh, wake there. 
of where we've been seeing Hurricane Barrel or what's likely to re-strengthen into it move inland there towards the Ohio Valley. And then, you know, Thursday, June 11th, even heading towards the back half of next week, not looking at much relief from the heat in the Mountain West and some at very high temperatures, well above 100, trying to even head on over there towards Montana. That is it for this weather update. Again, if you like this kind of content, you want more consistent, accurate, and easy to understand forecasts in the future, I'm not going to hype it up. I'm going to be direct with you. I'm going to make sure that you understand the latest information from especially official sources. Subscribe to the channel. I'll see you back here Saturday or Sunday with the next one. One Nation Weather.